Hi, welcome to Finest Women in Real Estate. Glad to have you back. I'm Steve Matley. I'm going to be your host today. Sitting with me today is Rebecca Chasco. She is an architect and a real estate agent, an interesting combination. We have Michelle Lemon. She is a mortgage, mortgage agent. How do we say that? Lender, broker, Lender. mortgage advisor, loan officer. We have a lot of different names. If you need money, <laughs> talk to Michelle. I provide the financing. <laughs> At the far end of the table, we have John Ruff, Rough and Ready Movers. Yep. John, good to see you here. Good to see you too, Steve. So today's show, we have an interesting mix of people. And today's show, I want to talk a little bit about the process of investing in real estate. And from really from the standpoint, not so much the fix and flip. I think that's done, overdone. Um, beyond done, burnt, yes. And it, I think HGTV ruined that for everybody. Aww. So in this market, we're looking at more acquiring real estate, fixing it up, but living in it. And then once it's fixed up and you've lived there a while, moving on to the next place. So I'm gonna start with Michelle. Uh, Michelle, that's one of the first steps, of course, we have to figure out how are we gonna afford to get this place? Because a lot of people look at that, they'd love to get in the real estate market. Right but they look at their financial situation and they just don't see how that's gonna happen. So the best thing to do first is your uh, primary residence. Uh, move in, make it your primary residence. Um, it's gonna get you the best financing and it's gonna open up all of the financing options as a primary residence versus it being a second home or an investment at that point. So most people start there to build their real estate portfolio. They move in, sometimes they fix it up as they go, maybe a little bit of sweat equity. Um, they grow some equity by the market moving itself and also by doing different types of improvements to the house as well. Okay, so they can, obviously it has to be livable when they move in. Right, uh, Working kitchen, working bathroom, but the rest of right. it they can really do while they're there. Correct. Maybe cordon off parts of the house and live in other areas. Right. So in order to do that right and do it the best way possible, you probably need the services of someone like Rebecca. So Rebecca, if somebody comes to you with this particular situation, what, what are you gonna work with them? How are you gonna help them? Um, actually, I think it's a great way to get into real estate investing. I know there are a lot of people that see the value in it and the fix and flips isn't an option for them. They can't afford to swing two mortgages at one time. Um, so it is a really great option. So one of the things I work with, and I do this with all of my clients, but specifically investment clients, is what is your end game? Knowing that most likely they're going to be phasing their project. As you said, quarantine off a portion of the house, make sure they have at least one working you know, bathroom and maybe they do the kitchen in the summer when they can grill outside. So I talk to them about what's your end game so that the phases make sense. So we're not undoing work we've just done when six months later when they're ready to tackle the next project and they didn't think about how this room leads into that room, things like that. So. Oh, and also there's going to be some things, for example, we're working in the bathroom, but while we're doing the plumbing there, it backs up to the kitchen. Yeah. We plan ahead for what's happening in the exactly. kitchen. Exactly. do the plumbing while the walls open. Exactly, right. exactly. So taking consideration of, okay, end game, what phases make sense to do together to save them money in the long run, bring those professionals in, bring the plumber all in at once instead of every, you know. Okay, now I'm going to ask months. a question, I, and, and don't take this as, I know this may be make your blood boil because people do this, but... Coming to you versus I can go to Home Depot and they have this really cool design software that shows me <laughs> what I can do. Yeah, so um, those of us in the architecture profession, we didn't go to school for five years or some of us six or eight years to that, that, that value and that knowledge that we get is not just replaceable by an app. Are those tools a great place to start? Absolutely, but talk to a design professional. People do, people who've been in this industry for a while have um, experience in this. We've seen things that you'll never think of and that your Home Depot you know, design software, although it's a great tool, it'll help you figure out how much square footage of flooring you might need, isn't gonna help you understand the nuances and the things that you wouldn't necessarily. And experience. I think that it also helps with the resale value of the property Absolutely. as well. So she knows what's, what's in now and what's gonna hold its value long term True. and how like you said how much square footage bedrooms bathrooms what to do for, so you can move on a, a, into your next investment okay. too so mm -hmm. and Rebecca what separates you a little from others is that yeah. you are a realtor so yes. you understand the real estate market yes you are an architect so you understand the design but you're also a construction manager yes. so you understand the process of it too yeah and I, that might be um, you know something that sort of sets me apart um, I work with a real estate team in Cantor brokerage it's um, the McKenna real estate team and one of my primary roles there is their architectural and construction consultant so every time that they get an investor whether it's my client or not I still get the call to hey can you 
can you come take a look at this? And it's allowing, it allows me to explain to my clients a little bit more of the big picture and help them get to their goals um, without having to call a bunch of different consultants where everybody has different ideas and you know too many cooks in the kitchen. It kind of, I think it, I think it streamlines the process. I try and streamline the process for my clients. Okay, so we've got some money and we've got a plan going here. But what people don't think about in planning is, John, is the moving. We don't think about, we did the last person we call and it's an afterthought. <laughs> yep. But there's probably some forethought that needs to go into this mm -hmm. even before we start this process. Absolutely. So you do move planning, not just the move itself. So tell us a little about what you can help with. Yeah, I mean, when you're planning your move, it, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. You know, areas where, what schools are there for your kids? You know, um, what's the demographic of your area? Jobs, you know, what, how's it gonna, affect your life and you take all that into consideration then the planning and budgeting process I mean when you're looking to vet and hire a moving company or you know you look at Michelle over here and she's getting the loan in order and then you get all your finances in order and vet your moving company properly okay and in addition to that I know a lot of people they, they spend money getting all their contents moved mm -hmm. and two months later decide this doesn't fit here <laughs> they don't well, right? so another reason to talk to your designer uh, earlier <laughs> on. In the so process. there's no two people you goals. need to talk to is your mover, figure out what does it cost, uh, does this work, talk to your designer to figure out is this the right things to fit here or should we just leave them behind or sell them off and move less. Now also when we're doing the fix-ups, we may have to, because we're cording part of the house off, store some of this stuff and Absolutely. you can help with that too. So oh right? yeah. Yeah, we have a uh, uh, 20,000 square foot facility. Um, we to store all the goods and as long as you need you know it's just month by month like a regular storage facility okay so we can move things in and move things out as mm -hmm. we close different rooms off and live in different areas of the house absolutely fantastic and uh, other things of moving that you had mentioned to me is um, that you actually move nationally yes so you're not just limited to Southern California no not at all I mean right now we have trucks in Ohio Arkansas Oregon and Arizona okay and that's and as we speak and you can move things like somebody's classic car? Oh, and absolutely. Their boat? Yeah, cars, boats. I, I say boats, planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> okay. And if my kids are really obnoxious, I can have you move them. And they don't have to uh, I can't take right? passengers. Too. Okay, okay. Well, I'll try that out. <laughs> okay, and, and I wanted to also um, follow up. There's a lot of things that go into moving that you can help with, like address changes and those type of things. Is that something we need to think about? I mean, address changes, what do you mean by that? Well, Elaborate. we're actually relocating everything we have. Mm -hmm. and, and we had talked a little earlier about some of the planning that goes into thinking through actually relocating everything to a new location. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of planning that goes into that, too. All your bills are going to change. Um, like you, say, you mentioned this, to hit schools. We've got to transfer transcripts, those type of things. So. Yeah, I mean, you've got to make sure the school's good if you're going to send your kids there. Know that there's, <laughs> a, know that there's a good babysitter. <laughs> we're going to have to take a quick break. When we come back... We're going to up this conversation a little bit and talk about a different type of property we can still do all this in that may be something most people don't consider. So I'm with John Ruff, Michelle Lamone, and with Rebecca Chasco, and we'll be right back after this. Hello, I'm John Ruff, owner of Ruff & Ready Moving & Storage. Wherever you're moving, our team is eager to assist you with all your moving and storage needs. You can count on us to pack and handle your personal belongings with care. We also provide both temporary and long-term storage for your household or office goods. For more information or to schedule a free in-home estimate, visit us at roughandreadymoving.com or call us today. From down the street to across the country, if your move is too tough, call Ruff. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Ah oh, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires.
welcome back to The Finest Women in Real Estate. I'm Steve Matley, your host for this show, and today I'm joined by Rebecca Chasco, Michelle Lamone, and John Ruff. And we've been discussing um, investing in properties, meaning moving into them, fixing them up while you're there, and then moving on to the next property or renting them out and then going to another property. But there's another type of investment we can do that's a little bit different, and a lot of people don't know they can do this. They'll look at the sales price on it, or they'll think it's over, over their head, it's daunting, and that is the multi-unit property. We feasibly could buy a building that has four living units in it Correct. and rent three of those out and live in one of them, and we may have to fix those while we're there, too. We're having the same situation, but now we just have more possibilities. Right. So, Michelle, that's probably going to be a different type of a loan. Uh, what's that look like? Well, a residential property is one to four units, and that's going to get you residential financing. Okay. Anything that's five units and above is going to get you commercial property, so it's very different. The financings between those two are completely different. So single, duplex, triplex, quadplex, we're okay. That's As soon correct. as we get to five, we're in multifamily housing territory. Correct. However, there are some units out there that are five plexes, maybe six plexes, and people want residential financing on it. So what they do is they call someone like my friend here and take down a wall and make a five plex a four plex, and that's completely legal. Okay, so we just have a larger right, unit. Right, right, right. So don't steer away from that if it comes up. But for the purposes of what we're talking about, having two, three, or four units and living in one of them and renting out the other units is definitely something that can be done. And when you're applying for that loan, we can consider the rents from the other three units, two units or one unit, to help you um, get approved for the loan for that property. So if we do what you mentioned, which is we take a wall down, now a fiveplex becomes a fourplex. Correct. We have basically one unit that's got two kitchens, multiple bathrooms. Can we have two different families living in there, extended family or something like that? Not for the purposes of getting the loan. Okay. Whatever you do after the fact is completely fine. Some people get misconstrued by, well, I've got two kitchens, I can't have two kitchens. Two kitchens are perfectly fine. There's families out there that need kosher kitchens. Okay. And it's totally fine to do that, so um, it's okay. Or we can have a kind of in-house granny flat. That's, that's right. On. That's absolutely right. Perfect. Now, of course, to do those kind of things, again, we have more to fix now. Well, we, now we have four kitchens, we've got four to eight bathrooms, we've got four to eight bedrooms, multiple living rooms, so now, we need to turn to you and would you talk to them about doing each one unique or different or would you talk to them about production all of them the same and save some money it depends on their long term their short term and their long term goals if their short term goal if it really is to live in one to help supplement the costs of the mortgage and the renovation and ultimately within say 6 months 8 months or even a year turn it and and leave and it just be just a rental property, then I would say keep it production. So each unit, if the units are like units, I mean, we, we do live in Southern California. Sometimes you'll find older homes that have been converted into multiple units, so each unit would be unique. Um, but if you have a lot of the same um, repeat units, then yes, I would typically recommend that people keep it production. Order the same cabinets, same kitchen, same styles of everything, because leftover materials from one will roll into the other. There's a million reasons why to do that. Um, but if, if their goal is to really live in the home for a long time, this is going to be their permanent residence, and they just have a couple of other units on the property to help supplement with income. No, pick the owner's unit and make it yours. Really make it your own. Make that unique. It will add resale val value later when you sell the home, or if you do decide to move out and rent that out, that unit being a little bit more unique or having better finishes or something like that, you'll also be able to return your investment. Okay, okay. we have to think about property management as well. Mm -hmm. So that means when we have to touch up paint, when we have to replace tile, and we have to change wallpaper if everything's the same we can just go to our stock of leftovers exactly. and patch right. yep. whatever we have to do yeah. okay and um, Michelle when we uh, take that loan out do we have to agree to live there for a certain amount of time no there's not a, a requirement that you have to live there for 12 months or 24 months you don't have any of that you do have to occupy one of the properties your intent is to occupy one of the properties as your primary residence right. depending upon um, what your goal is most of the time people move their family into one of the units they rent out the other units the amounts of rents that they're collecting from those units tend to pay the entire mortgage in essence allowing them to live there for little to zero monthly payment and ideally okay. that's we, we would like to do it that way okay and as rental rates go up eventually you give a cash flow coming out right there. absolutely yeah okay. or 
if you end up moving out in the future and you want to go to a single family residence for you and your family, that fourth unit, second unit, third unit will become another rental property and then you're, you're definitely cash flowing at that point because you've gotten them all rented out. Okay, so John, I'm going to throw a scenario at you. Let's say I'm, I'm one of these investors, I buy this unit, I move into it, and then what I'm doing is I'm renting out the other units to family members. I've got my oldest kid and their spouse and their kids moving in there. I've got my parents moving in another one, and then I've got my cousin moving in another one. Can I get a bulk deal on moving everybody in? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, how, how good do you get it along with your family, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have good sound walls. Charge me less and charge him more, right? Yeah, right. absolutely. So what we would do is we'd get a bigger crew on the job. And being a multifamily situation, um, it'd be probably harder parking access. So we have different equipment that could fit in there. Anything as small as a 16-foot truck all the way up to a tractor trailer and everything in between. Um, but definitely get a better deal on that. I mean, we could take them from wherever they at, wherever they are, maybe across the country or right down the street and do it all in one move or bring them to our facility and then bring it all at once and save you time and money. Okay, so that'd be a good plan to do oh, that. Oh, absolutely. Okay, awesome. Now, um, one last thing uh, to kind of throw out there on this, to throw a little twist in all this stuff. Um, would I be able to move into one unit and fix it and then move to the next one after that one's fixed and rented out and keep moving around the, the building until I get all of them fixed up? As far as like a fourplex? Yeah, a fourplex. Well, when you, if you're going to buy one, you buy them all four. Well, I'm saying I buy them all, but I live in this one. Then I, when I fix it, I move to the next one, fix that one up, move to the next one, fix that one up. Potentially you could. Good. Okay. You know, I mean, it, it, whatever your heart desires. Just trying to think really. of how this would work for people that, uh, to make it workable for them. Logistically, if that is, if that's your plan and that's something you can, you want to do, um, to, like I said, to sort of break into the, you're, you're not going to want to do that for a long period of time. Like, uh, your you environment really does affect yeah. how you live yeah. and everything. And I think that could produce chaos, but some people could do it. But what I would definitely recommend is um, live minimalistically. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to, you can call John every time, but, uh, <laughs> hey, I would love, well, my, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> moving a lot of things and, and also maybe don't focus on getting too settled in one okay. unit. Yeah. My thought was some of these need a lot of work. Yeah. So you have to gut them and finish really, them up. Yes, so you should. have to do that. All right. We're about out of time for this segment. We're going to be right back after this. Again, my guests today are Rebecca Chosko. I, we have Michelle Limon and we have John Ruff and we'll be right back. Hello, I'm John Ruff, owner of Ruff and Ready Moving and Storage. Wherever you're moving, our team is eager to assist you with all your moving and storage needs. You can count on us to pack and handle your personal belongings with care. We also provide both temporary and long-term storage for your household or office goods. For more information or to schedule a free in-home estimate, visit us at roughandreadymoving.com or call us today. From down the street to across the country, if your move is too tough, call Ruff. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Ah yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back. This is Steve Matley. I am joined today by Rebecca Chosko, Michelle Lamone, and John Ruff. We've been talking about some different creative options for getting into the investment world with people, maybe things you haven't thought about before. And I find it fascinating because the investment properties that I invest in tend to be very different. They tend to be raw land type deals. Um, this is very different with tenants and property management. So I want to go around the table and, and real quick, Give me your very best tip in about 30 seconds. So Rebecca, your best tip. Um, for multifamily investment, definitely two things. One, do your homework, and two, really know what your end game is. Don't wing it. 
um, know where you want to go so that you can plan accordingly and talk to your design professionals and other professionals obviously people have you can know a lot about you can know a little bit about a lot but you really only know a lot about one little thing usually so okay Michelle um, if you're gonna m make your first move uh, and you don't have a lot of experience or a lot of money, um, make it your primary residence, live in it for a while, grow some equity, do some sweat equity, it's free, get things um, repaired and fixed up on the house and then you can sell it and take that equity and flip it to another property and grow. Or if you're a little bit risky and you got, you know, you know it's a little glory, I guess, uh, try a two, three or four plex and allow the rents from those properties to offset and supplement your, your um, payment. And John? Absolutely. I mean, with multifamily, I mean, just in the beginning, stay minimal. If you're trying to maximize your um, investment and keep growing, uh, stay minimal. And then as you add on, um, we're, we're there to move you. <laughs> Fantastic. So for if you're out there and you're looking to get into investing, look at what other people are doing. And for the most part, do something different. If everybody's getting into this fix and flip, that's a really tough thing to do right now because everybody's jumping on that bandwagon. So we've discussed some options today that may work. With the higher prices of the houses, this would be your primary residence. You would invest yourself into it, your money into it, your, your um, sweat equity into it, and increase the value of that so when you either rent it out or move on, you'd have a little more money and you'd be able to move and continue to grow. And if you do the multi-unit multi type thing, you could actually have tenants paying you to live there and you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have a mortgage then you could take that money you normally would have spent on mortgage and maybe invest in another property and, and continue growing that the most important thing to do that we've heard today is plan 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 think ahead get the experts don't try to do it all by yourself meet with the true experts that know what's going on someone like rebecca who can understand real estate architectural design construction management what that process looks like someone like michelle who can hook you up with the right funding for the right property to do it the right way so that you're gonna know exactly what you're getting into and be able to figure out an ROI that works for you and a plan that works for you. And someone like John, so you don't get caught sleeping on figuring out how we're gonna get stuff moved in, how do we relocate, um, really plan ahead on all that and know what's gonna fit, what's not gonna fit, how much is it gonna cost and factor all that in. And if you do the planning right, you'll find out that you can be very successful investing in real estate. So thank you all for being here. Thanks, Steve. For Rebecca Chosco, Michelle Lamone, and John Ruff, this is Steve Matley saying we'll see you next time on Finest Women in Real Estate. Don't forget to tune in each and every week for different hosts and different topics. We'll see you next time.